Uh, okay, hello guys. Uh, this is a past paper of Cambridge uh, Physics AS 9702, 1-2 May, June 2018. Question number one. It is said that a sheet of gold leaf has a thickness of 0.125 micrometer. A gold atom has a radius of 174 picometer. Approximately how many layers of atoms are there in the sheet? First of all, you should find a diameter of gold atom. So diameter is equal to um, two times radius. So two times 174, which is 348 picometer. After that, you should find how many gold atoms, because for each of them this is diameter, how many gold atoms, how many layers of atoms are there in the sheet. So um, thickness is 0 0.125 times 10 to the power negative 6 because of micrometer. So this is a prefix, you should change it. So equal to number of atoms, number of layers times 348 times 10 to the power negative 12, which is picometer, you should change it to meter. So then if you calculate, n will be uh, 360 layers, which is approximately 400. So C is right. Question number two, <coughs> you should find n, the value of n. So uh, first of all, V uh, should be subject. So V to power n should be subject. So C D equal to 2F divided by V to power n rho a. So v to power n is equal to 2f divided by cd rho a. Okay, now what is the unit for f? Because 2 is a number, it's a constant number, so it doesn't have any unit. So what is unit of F? Kg ms negative 2. And also C doesn't have any unit. So unit of uh, density will be Kg m to power negative 3 times m to power 2 because of a is cross section area and unit of cross section area is meter square a square meter so the result will be m2 s negative 2 if you simplify result will be m2 s negative 2 you can write it m s negative 1 to power 2 you know that ms negative 1 is unit of speed. So v to power n equal to ms negative 1 to power 2, which we can conclude that n equal to 2. So B is right. Uh, question 3. You should find percentage uncertainty in the calculated resistance. So, 4% is uncertainty in the current reading and 1% in the PD. So, for percentage uncertainty, you should only 
add for every formula you should add if for example v equal to r equal to v over i you should add percentage uncertainty of uh, r equal to percentage uncertainty of v plus percentage uncertainty of i for formula which there are plus minus times and division you should add percentage of uncertainty so for v is how much four percent for i uh, so for v is one percent uh, there is a four percent in the i yes and one percent so i should change the place of them okay one percent it is for v and four percent percentage uncertainty of i so the result will be five percent so as i said for example we have another formula uh, for resistance is rho l over a so what is percentage uncertainty of r this is extra information so you can say that percentage uncertainty of rho plus percentage uncertainty of l plus percentage uncertainty of a <coughs> okay so for every formula you should add if there is a power if there is a power then power will come behind of that percentage of uncertainty for example e equal to m uh, no uh, i will give you another example uh, for example e equal to um, v square over r times t so for this example percentage uncertainty of e which is energy equal to two times percentage uncertainty of v because of power plus percentage uncertainty of t plus percentage uncertainty of r Okay, we go to the next question. In question four, what is the absolute uncertainty in the calculated energy value? So, as I said, energy is V squared T divided by R. So, find percentage uncertainty of V, 0 0.1 divided by 4 times 100%, which is 2.5%. 0 0.1, as you can see, for V, 0 0.1 is uncertainty and the value of V is 4. So 0 0.1 divided by 4 times 100%, which is 2.5%. You can do same for uh, T and also for R. You will get 2% and 3%. Then, percentage uncertainty of E is equal to 2% which is for T, 3% which is for R and 2 times 2.5% which is for V squared. The total percentage uncertainty of E will be 10%. Now what do you want to find? You are going to find absolute uncertainty. For absolute uncertainty you should times percentage uncertainty of E by the value of E. Value of E is given in the question, which is 80 Joule. So 80 times 10% equal to 8 Joule, which uh, D is right. So question for D is right. Question 5. Each graph best shows the variation with time t of the displacement s of the object. 
As you can see in the figure, velocity becomes zero at one point. So, in the displacement time graph, in at one point, a slope must be zero. A slope must be zero. So B and D completely wrong. Between A and C, you can see that A, at the maximum point, a slope is zero. So the best choice for this question is A. Question six, it is a projectile motion. Uh, it, the question said which graph best shows the variation with t of the speed of the projectile from when it is launched to when it lands on the ground. Okay. First of all, in this question, in projectile motion, at maximum point, velocity is minimum, but it is not zero. It is minimum, but it is not zero, because at maximum point, we have horizontal velocity uh, and vertical velocity become zero. Uh, based on this, uh, D will be wrong, because a speed of D becomes zero at maximum point, so D is zero. A also is wrong, choice A is wrong, because a speed is not constant. B is wrong because in projectile motion, a speed never be zero. That's why the best choice for this question is C. So, question six, C is right. Question seven, which graph shows the variation with time t of the distance d fallen by the sky diver? Okay, the question said the skydiver falls vertically from a helicopter and reaches constant terminal velocity. Because of that, so the end of the graph should have, con should have constant velocity. So choices A or C can be right answer. When a skydiver falls, initial velocity is zero. So, graph should touch time axis first. So, C is right, because as you can see in C, in first, for example, uh, after t equals zero, a slope of graph will be parallel to time axis. So, it means initial velocity is zero. That's why C is right. Question 8. What is the average force exerted on the wall by the ball? So, suppose this is a wall. So, if one ball um, goes toward the wall, and if you suppose to the right is positive because velocity is vector, that's why 30 meter per second will be positive. And then 20 meter per second will be negative because it is said that uh, rebounding in the horizontal direction with a speed of 20. So 20 will be negative. So first of all, you should find change of velocity. Change of velocity is final velocity minus initial velocity, which is negative 20, negative 30, which is negative 50 meter per second. This is change of velocity. Now, what is the formula of force and rate of change of momentum? Force is equal to rate of change of momentum. What is momentum? Momentum is mass times change, mass times velocity. So in this question, mass times change of velocity over time taken. 
mass is 0 0.055 change of velocity is negative 50 divided by 5 times 10 to the power negative 3 which is time uh, for ball in contact with the wall so if you calculate you will get 500 50 Newton and sign in this question is not important because we don't want direction of force we want only value of force which is 550 Newton which is D is right in question 9 you should find kinetic energy of body Y after the collision so, first of all, we should use conservation of momentum. So, in conservation of momentum, we say that some of the momentum before collision must be equal to some of the momentum after collision. We suppose that right direction is positive, so left direction will be negative. So, conservation of momentum for these two objects, mv plus the second one doesn't have any velocity, so it will be zero equal to after collision, after collision, mass m move with velocity of negative 3v over 5 and mass 4m move with velocity of vy which is unknown so 8 over 5 mv is equal to 4m times vy so V equal to 2 over 5 V. So this is velocity of object Y. Now we use kinetic energy. Kinetic energy of object Y equal to 1 over 2 times 4M times Vs squared for object y so which is 1 over 2 times 4m times 2 over 5 times v s square so the result will be 16 m v to power 2 divided by 50 So the answer for this question is C. Question number 10. <clears throat> Find the density of mixture. What is the formula of density of mixture? So density of mixture is equal to m1 for object 1, m2 for object 2, v1 plus v2. Because there is no mass in this question, so you know that mass equal to density times volume. That's why I use rho 1 v1 plus rho 2 v2 divided by v1 plus V2. Density of water is 1 times volume of water is not given plus. Next one is 1.3 times volume of 
is 40 divided by V1 plus 40. Equal to what is the uh, density of mixer? Density of mixer is 1.1. If you do cross multiplication to find V1, you can get 80 centimeter cube volume of water, which is added. That's why D is right. Question 11. An astronaut throws a stone horizontally near the surface of the moon that there is no atmosphere. Which one describes the horizontal and vertical forces acting on the stone after release? There is initial speed for this, I mean a stone, but no horizontal force. That's why C and D will be right. One of them will be right. And then vertical force uh, would be gravitational force which is constant near to the surface of the moon based on that because vertical force will be equal to mg that's why and you know that mg near the surface of the moon is constant that's why c is right question 11 c is right Question 12. A cylindrical block of wood has cross-sectional area A and weight with W. It is totally immersed in water with its axis vertical. The block experiences pressure P1, Pt, and Pb at its top and bottom surfaces, respectively. Which expression is equal to the upthrust on the block? Okay. So first of all, uh, here there are water and one object is in water. Here pressure is Pt and here pressure is Pb. Okay, first of all, what is up thrust? Up thrust is the pressure difference times cross section area of object. Pressure difference between the bottom and top of the object. Because of that, you can say that PB minus PT, change of pressure, times my cross section area of object. It gives you the force. So B is right. Question 13. In question 13, it is said that which rod describes the changes to the forces exerted by the rods on the board. So a uniform diving board is held by two fixed rods at points P and Q. A person stands at end R of the diving board as shown. The forces exerted by the rods on the board are vertical. The board remains in equilibrium as the person slowly moves towards point Q from end R. Which rod describes the changes to the forces exerted by the rods on the board? Okay. First of all, if a person slowly moves towards point Q, so distance QR decreases. So distance QR will decrease. Because PQ is constant, distance PQ is constant uh, 
That's why force at P must decrease according to equilibrium. Force at P must decrease. Based on equilibrium condition, because equilibrium condition ha uh, I mean, uh, has two conditions. Number one, net force should be zero and net moment should be zero. So for net force, we can say that force at Q should be equal to force at P plus force at R. Force at R is constant. Then force at P decrease. Then force at Q must decrease. Because of that, force at P decrease, force at Q decrease. Why? Because force at R is constant. It is weight of person, which is constant. That's why if force at P decrease, then force at Q must decrease. And based on this reason, A is right. For this question, A is right. Question 14. What is the torque of this couple? First of all, what is couple? If there are two forces, two parallel forces in opposite direction, which are equal, so, two equal forces which are parallel and they are in opposite uh, direction and from the pivot they have same distance. Then these two forces are called couple. What is the torque of couple? Torque of couple equal to one of the force one of the forces times distance between two forces. So the answer is 2FD, which is C. So what is torque of couple? You should write one of the forces times by distance between two forces, which is 2D. So the answer will be C for this question. Question 15. In question 15, first of all, there are two forces. One of them is 3, one of them is 4, what is the resultant of 3 and 4? Resultant of 3 and 4 will be 3a squared plus 4a squared, which is 5 Newton. So this is resultant of 3 and 4, which is 5. There is another force, 4 Newton in opposite direction of resultant force. You know that to find total, resist, total um, resultant, you should subtract forces in opposite direction. So 5 minus 4 will be 1 Newton. And direction will be direction of larger force, which is in, I mean, uh, direction of 5 Newton. So, based on this, 1 Newton in this direction, which is D. So, question 15, D is right. Question 
question 16. In this question, it is said that in normal driving conditions, an electric car has a range of 150 km. This uses all of the 200 megajoule of energy stored in its batteries. With the batteries initially fully charged, the car is driven 100 km in normal driving conditions. First of all, I should find for 100 km. So, 150 km uses 200 megajoule of energy. So, for 100, how much energy used in the battery? So, X will be 133.3 mega joule. Okay. Now we continue question. Uh, the batteries are then recharged from a household electrical supply, delivering a constant current of 13 ampere at a potential difference of 230 volt. Okay. Now. What is power? Power is IV. So I is 13 and V is 230, which is 2,990 watts. Now energy is 133.3 megajoule. So you can say that 133.3 instead of mega you should write 10 to the power 6 equal to power because uh, formula of energy is equal to P times T. So power is 2990 we calculate it times by T. So T, you can find T in terms of second and then divided by 3600 you can find it in uh, hour. So for forty-four thousand four hundred eighty-two seconds so if you divide by 3600, 44,482 divided by 3600, you can get 12 hours, nearly 12 hours, 12.4 hours, which B is right. So question 16. B is right. Question 17. This question is resolution of vectors and you should find relationship between the magnitude of TP and W. Okay. In this question, if this is a wall, and if this is a string, this is P, and this is tension, angle theta, and this is a rod. And the weight of this ball is W downward. So, what should we do? First of all, this is a this line is this line is parallel to wall. That's why according to mathematics this angle must be theta. When this angle is theta based on resolution of vectors, this component will be t times cosine theta. And this one T times sine theta. 
because this spot is in equilibrium, that's why some of the forces in x direction, sigma fx will be zero, which means p minus t sine theta will be zero. So p equal to t sine theta. Some of the forces in y direction must be zero because this is condition of equilibrium. That's why t cosine theta minus w will be zero. So w will be t cosine theta. So p equal t sine theta and w equal t cosine theta. Now if you look at uh, four choices, uh, you cannot choose A, B, and D. Because for D, for example, W is P ta tan theta and W equal T cosine. So W is equal to T cosine, that's right, we have. But we should find W equal P times tan theta. So we can divide them. Okay, P divided by W equal to uh, T sine theta divided by T cosine theta. And T and T cancel out, which is equal to tan theta. So, P equal W times tan theta. That's why choice D also is wrong. Because P equal to W tan theta that we got. But choice D said W equal P times tan theta, which is not right. So based on this, uh, we, ch we can check C. So for C, both, uh, I mean, side of the equations should be a square. So P a square equal to T a square sine a square. W a square equal to T a square cosine to a square. If you add these two, you will get P a square plus W a square equal to T a square sine square plus cosine square. You know that sine square plus cosine square will be 1. That's why p square plus w square will be t square. That's why c is right. So in this question, c is right. Question 18. A steel sphere is drawn vertically on two horizontal metal plates. The sphere hits the plate with a speed u, leaves it at a speed v, and rebounds vertically to half of its original height. Ignore a resistance. Which expression gives the value of V divided by U? Okay. So this is ground and this is height edge. Near the ground, velocity will be U. When hit the ground and rebounds, velocity will be V and bridge to the half of its original height. Based on conservation energy, for this is motion 1, this is motion 2. For motion 1, based on conservation of energy, we can say that 
at point, suppose this is point A, this is point B. At point A, energy is equal to kinetic energy plus potential energy because there is no kinetic energy. So potential energy is mgh. At point B, there is only kinetic energy because potential energy will be zero. If you simplify, U will be root of 2gh. Now for motion 2. A speed, suppose this is point B, C, this is point D. At point C, energy will be kinetic energy and potential energy is zero because this is a reference for potential zero. So potential energy on the ground will be zero. This is, a, this is our reference for conservation of energy questions. Equal to mg times half of h. So based on this, we can get v. If you simplify, mass and mass cancel out, V will be GH. Now, what expression gives the value of V over W? Now, V divided by V over U. V over U equal to root of GH, root of 2 GH, which is 1 over if you simplify 1 over root of 2, the square root of 2. So answer will be C for this question. Question 19. In this question, energy is not conserved. That's why, because of, air, because of uh, friction, energy is not conserved uh, that's why we should use this formula energy in second position minus energy in first position equal to work done by resistive force which is uh, frictional force in this question work done by frictional force okay Suppose y, energy at y, so right here energy at y and x, energy at y, energy at x. At y, suppose potential energy is zero, so level of y, potential energy is zero. So potential energy is zero, we have only kinetic energy at y. At x, because a speed is zero, so kinetic energy is zero, and we have only potential energy. And h is vertical distance from point y. So, one over two times five hundred times eleven to power two, a speed at y minus five hundred times. 9.81 times vertical distance from y is 30. If you calculate, you will get 1.2 times 10 to the power 5 joule, which is B. Question 20. An elastic material with Young modulus E is subjected to a tensile stress S. Hooke's law is obeyed. What is the expression for the elastic energy stored per unit volume of the material? As you can see, there are four choices. 
you can see Young modulus E and tensile stress S. So, and what is the question? Question said elastic energy as stored per unit volume. Okay, you know that elastic energy as stored. So elastic. energy in a spring is 1 over 2 fx so question said what is elastic energy stored per unit volume you know that volume is cross section times length so I can write a times L because if this is a wire if length is L, cross section is A, then volume will be AL. So this is our question. Okay. We know that Young module is a stress over a strain. A stress is S based on this question. And a strain is X extension divided by length. So, what is X over L? X over L equal to S over E. Because Young module equal to SL over X, that's why X over L equal to S over E. Why I use this equation? Because in four choices, you can see only stress and young module that's why we need to find x over l based on s and e okay now we substitute 1 over 2 times instead of f over l f over a I can write S because S is F over A. So I substitute S with F over A. So I substitute instead of F over A, I can write S times. Instead of X over L, I can write S over E. If I simplify, I will get S2 divided by 2E. S2 divided by 2E, which D is right. Which D is right. 